Second Reformed Church, and welcome to worship for Sunday, May 3rd, 2020. My name is Katie Alley, and I serve as the youth director here at Second Church in Pella, Iowa. This morning, I want to thank a few people who have continued to help make our online worship services possible. Behind the camera is Jim Emmert and Lauren Blom. Our music has been provided by Krista Wild, Jesse Boss, and Eleanor Witt, and pastors Steve and Sophie Matinee Vanderwell. I invite you to take a few deep breaths, to center yourself. We are glad that you are joining us today for worship. Steve and Katie and I have been pleased to tell you that we have discovered a new liturgical season. This is the eighth Sunday of COVID. Doubtless many of you have heard that there has been some talk of reopening churches, and we want to assure you that the elders and the consistory have begun a discussion about the best ways in which to do that, that is the safest for everybody. So be looking and listening in the coming weeks as we prepare a plan. Let us worship God. As we come before God in worship, I invite you as we hear the call to respond and we come. God calls us to worship and, and we, we come, come, some with laughter and songs of joy. God calls us to worship and, and we, we come, come, some from a sense of obligation or habit. God calls us to worship and, and we, we come, come, some with hearts heavy with grief. God calls us to worship, and, and we come, some with distractions or exhaustion. God calls us to worship, and, and we, we come, come, some with eagerness and enthusiasm. God calls us to worship, and, and we, we come, come, some with stress, loneliness, or depression. As God's dearly loved children, we bring all our joy and pain hope and hurt into this place of spirit-given grace, love, and hope, and we worship God together.
trusting that God is merciful, gracious, and overflowing with steadfast love, we can come before God openly and honestly. So let us turn to God in confession, first spending a few moments in silent confession, and then I will pray a prayer for all of us. So let us go to God in confession. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we know that you have called us to love our neighbors and consider the interests of others above our own. Yet we confess that we often prioritize our own desires. We make decisions to further our own comfort. We forget that our experience of the world is not the universal experience. Forgive us. Forgive us when we choose to chase after our own flourishing at the expense of another. Forgive us for ignoring the cries of those in need. May your spirit move us to compassion and kindness so the love of Christ might be seen through us. Amen. Now receive this good news. Through Jesus Christ, the redemption of all of our sins is proclaimed to you. In Christ, there is redemption in his blood and the forgiveness of all of our trespasses by the riches of his grace. Know that in Christ, God embraces you. God forgives you. You are beloved by God. Believe this good news and be at peace. And when we have been forgiven and set free, we ask how we should live, and God's law no longer is a burden that accuses us. It becomes a gift to guide us into grateful living. So hear how God would have us live. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other, just as in Christ, God has forgiven you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Amen. <laughs>
Children, this is your time. I wonder if you can guess where I am standing in the church. I'm going to invite you to send me an email telling me where I am, and I'll write back and let you know if you're correct or not. But as you can see, this is an image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. And here I have another little wooden statue of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Do you see his staff and also the lamb that is on his shoulders? Today's scripture reading and sermon are based on John chapter 10, where Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd, and the Good Shepherd cares for his sheep. Have you heard of the story of Chris, the sheep that wandered lost for many, many years? For lack of being taken care of, its wool started growing and growing and matting until he became so large and so laden that it was hard for him to walk. But one day the, a good shepherd found him and sheared off all his wool. And with all of that burden lifted off of him, he was able to run with the other sheep again. Jesus is our good shepherd. And Jesus wants to take care of all the burdens that we carry. In these days, are there burdens that you'd like to give over to Jesus? Let's pray, shall we? Jesus, loving shepherd, take our burdens, our sorrows, our sins, and carry them for us that we may follow you gladly. Amen. And now receive our blessing. You are God's beloved child. With you, God is well pleased. A reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of a stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to still steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Voices are so important. The sound and tone of our voices identify us. There are certain voices that we know within seconds of hearing. Fran Drescher, Alex Trebek, Morgan Freeman. These are some iconic voices. And they aren't simply iconic because of the words they say, but by their tone. Fran Drescher, a little bit nasally. Alex Trebek, something informative and direct. The smoothness of Morgan Freeman's voice. Now, beyond celebrity, consider the voices of those in your life. A parent, sibling, 
spouse or friend, the folks who never need to say their name on the phone because you just know. Think for a minute how it feels to hear a familiar voice. How does your body respond? Perhaps you know the tone of your parents' voice when you're in trouble, so your body tenses up. Maybe that one's just me. Maybe the sound of your spouse's voice causes your shoulders to relax because you feel safe and loved. Or when you hear your sister say hello on the end of the telephone and the tears fall easily because you know that she knows you. The sounds of voices matter and mean something. My first year in seminary, I felt pretty lonely and overwhelmed. I couldn't quite find my direction and my small group work was uncovering a lot of pain in my life that needed to be tended to. I had to start thinking of activities or practices to help ground me and make me feel safe and loved. Many Friday nights, my best friend would call and read to me over the phone. That year, we worked our way through a novel. Nothing super heavy, but nothing too fluffy either. While I loved the story that was being told, what really mattered to me was hearing a familiar voice. The sound of my friend's voice gave me comfort. It wasn't always about the words. It was about the sound, a sound that represented being known and loved and seen. Perhaps this is something the gospel writer wants us to notice in today's scripture lesson. Jesus says, when he, the shepherd, has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. In the same way we have a visceral response to the voices of people in our lives, the sheep seem to have a similar response to the sound of these two different voices. One must sound safe and invitational because the sheep follow. The other must not have that same timbre because it causes the sheep to run away. Now, I have often heard that sheep are not that smart, which makes me think their responses to the voices are indeed rather visceral and less calculated. It doesn't seem to me that they pause and calculate which voice had the better offer. Rather, the very sound of the voice gives them everything they need to know. It isn't always about the words. It's sometimes about the sound. Throughout the Gospels, we are given some clues about the different tones of Jesus' voice. Or at least I like to imagine what Jesus' voice might have sounded like in different situations. When he preaches the Sermon on the Mount, I imagine a voice that speaks with authority, one that commands the attention of listeners, not in a harsh or bossy way, but in a trustworthy way. I imagine more of a whisper when Jesus calms the storm, a hushed tone that only the wind and the waves can hear. I wonder if when he called the disciples, his voice had a tone of excitement and expectancy, something that sounded inviting and evoked curiosity. I think Jesus' voice sounded playful when he blessed the children and captivating as he told stories. I hear desperation in his voice as he prayed in the garden, agony as he cried out to God from the cross. So many different tones and timbres. After all, he was human. In our text this morning, I imagine the voice of the Good Shepherd to be tender and gentle, yet strong and trustworthy at the same time. It's the voice that perhaps we all need and long to hear. 
not just in these strange and uncertain days, but throughout all of our days. Our world is filled with many voices and opinions on which voices are the best. And to be sure, not all of them are bad. Not all of them belong to strangers. Sometimes the myriad of voices we hear belong to folks we love and trust and whose opinions and ideas we deeply value. Perhaps we hear echoes of the strong and tender voice of the Good Shepherd in the kind words of loved ones. Maybe we hear the gentleness of his voice in music or feel the warmth of his breath in the breeze. The voice of the Good Shepherd may offer comfort and security to us when we feel lost, unsure, afraid, or sad. His gentle voice leading us deeper into the fold to be kept close and surrounded by a community. The voice of the Good Shepherd will also lead us out into the world. The gate of the pen swings both ways letting us into the sheepfold and out into the wilderness. As we follow the voice of the Good Shepherd, we are moved toward justice, to associate with the lowly and practice hospitality. It will bring us to the margins to practice solidarity with the oppressed. It will move us toward compassion and mercy for our neighbors. It may lead us away from our own comforts and desires, but will never leave us stranded or abandoned. And the voice of the Good Shepherd will always lead us toward abundant life. This is how our scripture lesson ends this morning. A reminder that Jesus came so we might have life and have it abundantly. Or as another translation says, that we may have life, more life than we could ever have dreamed of. The invitation today is to listen close and trust the voice of the Good Shepherd, to be led toward, toward compassion, kindness, justice, and gentleness, to remember that wherever the Good Shepherd brings us is a step toward more life than we could have ever dreamed of. As our days seem mundane and uncertain, and perhaps even boring, I invite you to look for God's abundance. I pray that you will have creativity and a vast imagination for what abundance is in this season. I pray you may know the tender and strong voice of Jesus leading you each and every step of the way. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in Christ, we have heard God's word today, and we are now invited to respond. So I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join in affirming our faith by singing the Nicene Creed. Crucified.
Today, for our time of prayer, I thought I would try something different. This kneeler was built for me by my father, and so it has a special place in my heart. And I, I like to kneel when I pray as a sign of uh, humility and just helps me to, to focus. Although when my kids were young, they would often come into my study and point out, they'd say, the velvet doesn't look like it's getting much use, Dad. But you at home now, if you are in some place where you could comfortably and safely kneel, I'd encourage you to just try it today. And if that isn't going to work for you, of course, stay as you are. But let's call upon the name of the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, it is good to come and to kneel before you. You are great. You are everlasting. You are beyond our mind, our words, our imagination. And how freeing it is to know that we can be humble, we can be weak, we can be vulnerable and honest before you. We thank you that even if we kneel, we do not need to grovel before you. Instead, you are eager to hear us eager for us to come to you. And so for these next few moments, may it be instead like we are climbing onto your lap and that you will hold us and we can share with you all that concerns us, all that amazes us, all that we are grateful for. You know, O oh Lord, that we live in strange days so help us each day to know how to be safe without being selfish. How to serve and to love without being reckless. How to care, how to reach out at the same time we are trying to distance. May your Holy Spirit bless us with creativity and courage and compassion. We pray today for so many, many who are ill and hospitalized. Oh Lord, have mercy. And as we have been, we continue to pray for all those who work in hospitals and medical fields and all that surround them who are truly putting their lives on the line. Protect them in body, but also in heart and in mind. Those who do the chores that make our daily lives possible, from grocery store to police to truck drivers to daycare workers, oh Lord, we give thanks. 
We today especially remember those who grieve in this time. Bind up the brokenhearted. Let the light of resurrection shine upon them even in their grief. Today we especially pray for the Gates, for the Banstras, for the Boswells, for the Masts. Bless those families in these difficult days. And around our world, we pray for those who live in conditions, in prisons, those in refugee camps, those who work in meatpacking factories, those who live in homes with many, many people where distancing is difficult. All these situations that are hard for us to imagine, but we thank you that you are there. And we ask that every, bless, every effort there for wholeness and health and peace may have your hands power in it. And now in a few moments of silence, we bring before you those prayers that we hold deep in our hearts. For young families trying to work at home and have school at home, bless them with patience. Bless them with laughter more than tears. For our own children, our grandchildren, for our parents, those we love and hold dear that we cannot see, thank you that you can see them and that you are near them. May we entrust them to your care. Thank you that this is your world and that you love us and your love will never let us go. Thank you that when we do not know what to pray, you have given us this prayer from Jesus that we offer now together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Greeting from the Thompsons. The kids are just as tall as you remember them, maybe in some cases a little taller. On behalf of the deacons, I just wanted to say thank you. We were fearful of what might happen when it became unsafe to meet as a congregation. But just as Steve, Sophie, and Katie have risen to that challenge, so have you. In the past two months, you have answered our prayers, and for that we are so grateful. Please continue your generosity to all the things that you love. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the ways you provide opportunities to give and to receive your many gifts. Be with us as we continue to do your work in so many ways. Amen. Savior, like a shepherd, please.
And now, beloved, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and in all the days ahead. Go in peace.